Hi everyone, I'm Nikki of Nikki Hearts Cards. I'm so glad to be here today with this adorable Santa card. Um, we are going to look at die cuts and four different ways that we can really spice up those die cuts to make something extra special. Make sure if you haven't done it yet that you hit the like and subscribe on the scrapbook.com channel and we'll get right into this project. I'm going to use some of scrapbook.com's cardstock. We're going to use some of their stencils. We're going to use some of their stamp products. It's just lots of different scrapbook.com exclusives, and we're even going to play with the cloud whip. So we've got lots of fun things in this video for you. Let's start with how you figure out what die cuts what on this. So I'm going to show you how I lay out a die cut and what I do. I tend to grab my mat so that I'm ready and I tend to grab the dies and look at the picture. So I want to know everything that is die cut in red. So I know his outfit is red and then I'm looking for his hat and then I put that on there and go ahead and get them cut out. Next, I do most everything else in white because we're gonna put some mixed media on this. I'm gonna leave the belt and the shoes and the little belt buckle off of this because those we will probably just die cut in some metallic paper um, and some black. And you may wonder, what in the world am I doing with a sticky note here? This is a full sticky notepad. You can do this with tape, but I've found that it's really a lot easier for me to keep up with these small pieces if I grab them real quick. So this is Santa's face here that I'm putting down and I put it against this cardstock and then use my tweezers and push it on there. And you know, it's a temporary sticky, but it keeps everything together. And I feel like it just helps you work with your die cuts easier. It also is nice if you're gonna color them, they're already on this little page and you can just color them right on this post-it note get started with our first way to add details to a die cut and that is to add ink blending on top of colored cardstock and that may seem silly but it makes this cool shadow effect so I'm gonna be using lumberjack plaid and I'm gonna take this close to the middle of this little um, outfit and this red here that's from the scrapbook.com paper pack is a very similar color but lumberjack plaid is slightly darker and that's what you're looking for you want levels of color that create that spotlight effect and i'm going to create that spotlight effect right in the middle of santa's outfit and my second level of color is gonna be this aged mahogany. Now that I've got some ink on this, I'm gonna use a little piece of mint tape to kind of hold down areas that I'm not ink blending, and that way I don't get my fingerprints on the ink. And now I'm thinking ahead too. This Santa has a very long beard, so I'm not worried about up at the top of the collar and ink blending right there. That's gonna be covered with his face and his beard. I'm just kind of doing the edges, the legs, right at the bottom of his coat. And I'm taking this aged mahogany not quite as far in. So I would say the first one um, goes in the most, the lumberjack plaid. And then this one goes in just a little bit more. And then we're gonna take black soot along the edges just to darken it up. It really adds adds to that spotlight effect. When I say the edge, I really mean the edge. Look at how I'm taking this little tiny blending brush and just barely hitting the edges. And I know it makes you scared sometimes to do something like a black, but remember this all blends very well. If you get too much, you can use a larger brush and just blend it out. So here's how that looks. I just love how it turned out. And now we're gonna move on to the white parts and our number two way to add detail. We're gonna use the Cloud Whip from scrapbook.com. And this is like a thick um, paste. So I'm gonna show you its texture. It is, it does remind me of a cloud. I mean, it's got a great name. So it's kind of um, thick and it does, you need a mat or something to put it on. And I just used my fingers. If you wanted to use gloves or something, that's fine. But I just went along the trim of Santa's jacket and just made it kind of messy like I would think fluffy cotton might look. Um, so I'm just kind of making it look fluffy and just playing with it. And really, I didn't do a whole lot to this. I just made sure I had the whole thing covered and I kind of tapped around and just when I was happy with how fluffy it looked, I went with it. This is going to make you have some 3D effects on your die cuts, which is really fun. Number three, let's use marker detail to create 
more effects. So I colored the face of Santa in E00, and then I'm gonna come in and give it some darker around the edges areas with E11. And I like doing this especially because I usually don't have skin colored cardstock. So it's an easy way to create color, but also it's kind of that same idea of creating a shadow. You can create that shadow with marker effects as well. And since I did the skin in Copic markers, I'm going to do the cheeks, eyes, and the mouth as well because that it's the same kind of colors, but also they're just little tiny things. And to die cut each of these out of a different color is sometimes difficult. So I'm gonna use R20 for the cheeks and nose. Right here, this round piece was a little confusing to me. This is actually the mouth. And I started off doing it pink, but I ended up deciding that I would use a black marker for the eyes and a black marker for the mouth. So when I'm using black around a white thing, I'm usually making sure that I definitely get that like outside line so that you don't see the white underneath. So if you see me take the marker around this, it's just to make sure that the whole thing is black. So when we're talking about mixed media, you don't have to stick to just one. I decided that I would use this Paper Glaze Luxe and Arctic Fox, which is sold by scrapbook.com. And I'm just, you'll see me just putting it on a flat white piece of paper. The reason that I'm doing that is because I'm going to die cut the beard and the mustache out of this. So I just do this and it's hard to see, but it is kind of gritty. It has a ton of glitter effect to it. And I hope you'll be able to see that in the next frame, but I just spread it on a piece of paper and I'm going to let it dry and then I will cut that out and we'll have a sparkly beard and mustache. So two different areas of kind of mixed media on this one thing. Look at how amazing that is. It's kind of gritty, but it's got such beautiful sparkle. Okay, while we put this Santa together, let me show you these details and what all we've done here. So we talked about details and adding them to die cuts. So we've ink blended on our little red Santa outfit. I'm now putting the belt on, which is just cut out of black cardstock. Next, we're going to put the trim of the jacket. Now on this, look how fluffy that cloud whip looks on that bottom trim of the jacket. It looks so cute. Our beard, we did the Lux Paper Glaze from Picket Fence Studios, and that made that sparkly beard. Um, I'm using glue. You could use an um, adhesive runner if you wanted to, but I really love this fine point of glue here. It just gives me a little bit more control on how I'm putting these things on. And since this is a thicker piece, if you need it to hold the piece down, if you're gluing and you need it to stay there for a minute, you can use your fingers like I'm doing, or you can grab an acrylic block and just set it on top of it. Either works, it just depends on your patience level. If you need to move right on, put an acrylic block over it and that will hold it down. But when these pieces have this extra um, bulk to them because we've used a mixed media um, item on them, then you may need to hold them for just a second to make sure it sticks. I'm going to jump ahead to these small details on the face. So these little pink dots are the rosy cheeks. And I wanted to show you that they tuck right behind this mustache. So you've got a little bit of lift right here. So you can kind of allow as much to show as you want, but it is nice to use something to help pick them up and kind of scoot them down below that mustache right here. Look how it goes down there. See, it fits perfect. Just a great set. I had originally thought I was gonna use the bright gold, but I decided when I was flipping through this mixed metals that I would use more of this. Um, so I looked at the silver, I kinda like that one, but I thought I'd use that muted gold right here. I don't know what we wanna call that, like a champagne gold. I'm gonna use that for the belt buckle, and I'm also gonna cut, it, cut out the Mary from this. So this Mary die cuts out an outline and individual letters. So I cut out the outline out of red and I kept the letters nice and sparkly. I did add some Distress Oxide to the red cardstock to create that spotlight effect. So with this beautiful Santa, he's so bright and colorful, I decided that my background, I would just do a little bit of Distress Oxide in tumbled glass in kind of a circular motion, just so that he's not stark white behind him and shows it makes all of his mixed media just show up so much better. And then on top of that, I was gonna add some of that Paper Glaze Lux, and I'm gonna show you which stencil I use, and that just kind of ties the whole card together.
I use this scrapbook.com stencil and even though it's not meant to be snowflakes, I just thought it looked perfect for this card. I hope you can see this Paper Glaze Luxe. It's called Arctic Fox. Of course, I'm going to put all of this in this supply list so that you will see, but I hope you're able to tell how sparkly this is. I felt like on Santa's beard, it's a little hard to tell in the video and this stuff is amazing. I just love it. Wait for the stencil reveal. Oh my goodness, you're going to love this. Look at how beautiful it looks. Ah, I just love it. I bet you thought I was going to forget to tell you the fourth thing that I used. Here it is. This may not be super obvious to a lot of people, but I think it makes a huge difference. Adding white gel pen details, especially in dark areas, tend to really highlight what you're doing. And you kind of want to think, about how the light is hitting. So I'm trying to decide which side I'm gonna put my little gel accents on. And I do that, I, I kind of think about, okay, if light was coming from this area, this is where I'd put it. And kind of like I've done with my shadow in the middle on this Mary, I'm just kind of pretending like the light is coming from the left. And I just randomly do dots versus lines versus lines and dots. And it just ends up looking so cute. Let me show you on Santa how this ends up looking. Here's our little Santa with his little white lines and dots, and I just kind of put them in the dark areas, and I feel like it highlights that area. Okay, look at how precious this Santa looks. Oh my goodness. So I put Mary above a very light blue ribbon because I just felt like it needed a little something behind it, and then I stamped and cut out this little Christmas, and it was just from a set at scrapbook.com, just a regular stamp set. I just thought it needed that, and Last but not least, one thing that I want to tell you about scrapbook.com is I love their foam backs. So like these are double-sided adhesive foam pieces and it helps just hold, especially if you're using some mixed media or something that can kind of warp your cardstock, it really helps hold it straight. Plus when you wrap a piece of ribbon around it, it's adhesive right there. I do put a little glue on um, just to make sure that I can slide it along my card base and make sure that it fits right. But I did back this with black and it just turned out so beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this video with ways to add lots of details to your die cuts and I had so much fun being here. Make sure that you've hit the like and subscribe button on the scrapbook.com channel. All of the items that I used in this video will be linked in the description. Another good way to find more details on this card is to look in my gallery. So scrapbook.com has a gallery um, and you can look up specific artists. I am Nikki Hart's cards in that gallery and I'd love to see you there. I hope you enjoyed this and have a great day. Bye!